everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I'm going to be doing something I have not done, I believe, in two years, and that is a TBR, a to-be-read video. We're going to talk about what I plan on reading in self-isolation. And it's a dual-pronged thing. I have gotten requests for what are you doing in self-isolation specific to books and other media, but also my TBR is wild. It has grown and it has grown in very specific ways and directions because of self-isolation. I'm finding myself wanting to read specific types of books, kind of jonesing for the book feeling, which is a good thing. I've both hit reading slumps kind of on a few titles, but also I've been jonesing for certain kinds of reads. So I thought I would go through some of the books that I am reading, and some of these are books that I recently purchased on sales as glorious, glorious ebooks because that's where we are right now. So I do my Kindle with me, so we will be going over specific titles. So probably a little more than half of these are net galley titles, a lot of which aren't out, but some that will be coming out soon. I mean, we'll see what I think of them. This is a TBR, and others are ones that I just purchased to read for my Kindle and or that are on their way from my local indie store hardcovers I went ahead and purchased. So let's start with those recent purchases that I made for my Kindle since they will be the most accessible to you. And as of yesterday, April 5th, they were definitely on sale on Amazon. So I honestly just said, F it. And I bought a bunch of books for like, I, they were either $3.99 or $4.99 and I just went ham wild. <laughs> Though the first book actually wasn't on sale, I just decided I really wanted to read it. I started it last night and I got to 21% and that is Voices from Chernobyl. It's an uplifting read, y'all. <laughs> So this is by Svetlana Alexievich, and it won the Nobel Prize a few years ago, and I just, I don't know, I slid into a slight Chernobyl mood last night. I've seen the miniseries twice already. I'm probably going to watch it again because it was, it just captures a mood, a certain mood, clearly a pretty down mood. But I've been interested in the people of Chernobyl, which the miniseries captured really well, and I know that Craig Mazin read this book. So yeah, I started it last night. I mean, it's, it's kind of grim and depressing, but I like that kind of thing. So far, I really like it. I mean, it won a Nobel Prize for Literature, so I'm sure it's going to continue to be good. The next thing I bought, I was just on that kick, another nonfiction thing I've wanted to read for a while, which is Bad Blood. This is the nonfiction book about the whole Theranos scandal. It is the foundation of the HBO documentary, HBO connections everywhere, and I've had my eye on it for a while, but it was always full price ebook and it was on sale. It's like something I already wanted to read that I can save six or seven dollars on, sold. So I bought that and I expect to dive into it. We'll kind of see how the, the, the mood reading goes. That goes for all of these books. I don't know what order I'm going to read them in. I just know I bought them all or got them all because I want to that they feel right for the moment. Next is part of the sale. Amazon has a ton of kind of commercial thrillers, things that have been adapted into TV shows and movies on sale. Check it out. You'll probably find titles that you've thought about reading but maybe haven't picked up. That's how it was for me. And so the next two fall under that category. The first is In the Woods by Tana French. There are people who just swear by Tana French. So she's been on my radar for a while and I loved the Stars series. Talk about a good kind of unsettling series. If you haven't watched it yet. I highly recommend it. They call it the Dublin Murders on Stars. It's multiple books by Tana French. So on a certain level, I'm going to know a lot about this book because I've already watched the total, the complete series, but people rave about Tana French so much and she won awards for this that I've been wanting to check it out. So I, I picked it up. And then I got Something in the Water by Catherine Stedman. I read Catherine Stedman's second book from NetGalley a few months ago. I gave it, I believe I gave it four stars. It was a pretty good read. And this was her first book, which was also a Reese's Book Club pick. So it's again, been on my radar, but it wasn't something I wanted to spend $10 on before. And so I got it on sale. So now I can read it. Similarly, under the realm of you could pick this up if you wanted to, I also added two books from Kindle Unlimited to my queue. One, a thriller, When I Was You by Minka Kent. Just the cover and description looked interesting to me. I like kind of identity plays in thrillers. And then I just added a memoir that they had, which was Unfiltered by Lily Collins. 
I'm going in half skeptical on this one because she's really young, but she's written a memoir, but I do find her interesting and have seen a disturbing number of her films, so why not? So that's that's kind of there for like a, a silly, fun, fast read. Next are two books I have ordered to come to me at home. One is Only Mostly Devastated by my friend Sophie Gonzalez. I've known her for years and I'm really excited to read her second book, which is a gay Grease retelling. It's a rom-com. It's just, I need to read something fun. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. And on a similar vein, Of Curses and Kisses by Islandia Menon, because Beauty and the Beast retelling, boarding school, that's all you really need to know. It's got several of my favorite tropes in one place, and it's just, oh, I need like a happy, fun, romantic thing. Though at the same time, I'm reading voices from Chernobyl. It, the pendulum keeps swinging. I've got a little bit of everything for everyone. So next, I'm going to go through my NetGalley TBR. This is where it gets a little tricky because a ton of these books aren't out yet, but you will be seeing me reading them in my reading vlogs and reviewing them in my wrap-ups, and as soon as they're available, you can go get them. I have a ton on here, thrillers, and I'm just excited to like dive in and like burn through these. So the first one is The Weekend Away by Sarah Alderson. This kind of has like a, a vacation isolation trope going for it. And I loved Sarah Alderson's last two adult thrillers, which were Friends Like These and In Her Eyes. I highly recommend her. Both of those are out. And when I checked them last week, they were on sale. So if you're looking for a new thriller author, I definitely recommend Sarah Alderson. And I'm super jazzed to have her next one from NetGalley. Then I'm excited to read An Education in Ruin. I did start this one and then got distracted by Chernobyl. Uh, I'm about 20% into it and it is a boarding school suspense thrillery type book. So again, totally my jam. Next we get into ones that I requested. I really don't remember much about these, so I'm just gonna tell you what they are. The Safe Place by Anna Downs. I think this is Isolation Trope. The Half Sister by Sandy Jones. I liked her last book, Her First Mistake, so I'm expecting more like twisty stuff and like Half Sisters is definitely something I'm interested in, given I have two. The Girl from Widow Hills, which is Megan Miranda's next book. I don't remember anything about it, but Megan Miranda is an auto request author for me. After All I've Done by Mina Hardy, the cover and stuff just looked interesting. Seriously, don't remember. The Truth Hurts by Rebecca Reed. I think that one is about like rich people being terrible. Pretty Things by Janelle Brown. Again, I do not remember why I requested this or anything about it, but I know that my friend Gretchen highly recommended it to me. Like she read the arc months ago and was like, you have to read this. It's one of the best books I've read in years. So that's why I requested that one. And Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power. I loved Wilder Girls. Rory is a frustratingly amazing writer. Like she's amazing. And I'm like, how are you so good? That's the, it's like fake frustration. <laughs> I know it's like creepy Children of the Corn-esque. So like, I'm gonna go into that one when like, I wanna just feel like moody and literary and like weirded out. I've also got The Herd by Andrea Bartz. I think this is also like mean girls type stuff. I, I think that's why I requested it. I've got The Tenant by Katrin Engberg. This is a translation of a very popular title. I also requested The Vanishing Season by Joanna Schaffhausen. It came out a while ago and they put it back up on Neck Alley to promote the further titles and I'm the dum-dum who didn't request the rest of the series while the first one was up. But I got the first one, so maybe I'll read that. And I also got a nonfiction book called The Unexpected Spy, which is about a woman who ended up being recruited to the CIA and doing like all of this interesting stuff. So I have a wide variety available on my NetGalley queue. It's mostly the same kinds of thrillers I'm really into and highly anticipated new titles by authors who I know I already love. Full disclosure, I'm gonna gravitate towards those first because I'm looking for distraction reads. I want to fall into big worlds that I can lose myself in. And by big, I mean like big conflict, like emotions, interpersonal stuff, not necessarily like science fiction and fantasy. Most of these aren't, but I'm looking for kind of the hyper specific fun worlds that you can get from a thriller or a suspense book, a rom-com and Chernobyl. <laughs> I do kind of oscillate wildly between like, 
I want a crazy distraction like watching a rom-com. I just finished re-marathoning Parks and Rec because when you need to feel good, watch a Mike Schur show, but then Chernobyl. So that is a glimpse into my current TBR. I mean, clearly I just rattled off like 20 books and I'm gonna see what I read when I read it. And if any of those sound good and are actually currently available to you, maybe you can pick them up too. If you're like me and you're looking for a similar kind of distraction, like everyone's gonna go into this whole situation with a totally different mood and strategy for reads, for their TBR, but this is mine. Murder, some nonfiction, and some distracting rom-coms. I wanna know what's on your TBR. What is on your self-isolation TBR? Let's talk about it down below in the comments and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I can't say I'm going to make TBR videos on a regular basis, but when it comes up as it did this time where it's actually worth talking about, I will do them. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week and you get that bookish content, that specific bookish content two to three times a month. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and especially in this strange, strange time, happy reading.